Hello everyone, my name is Ellie Hope Collins and I'm the founder of Hope Reclaimed and we give support and encouragement to individuals who are healing from heartbreak. And in this video today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you about tips and tricks that I wish that I would have implemented in my life to become a better sleeper when I was going through heartbreak. And I hope that they'll be helpful for you if you're struggling to sleep at night when you're going through a divorce or a bad breakup or the loss of a job, heartbreak in general. I want to encourage you to take sleep and make it a priority for yourself because you are worth it. I was going through a divorce in 2016 and 2017 and sleep was a huge issue. It was a huge issue for me. I did not want to go to sleep. I hated my bed because I was married and then all of a sudden I was forced to sleep alone and the vulnerability, the anxiety that raised up in me around at nighttime was overwhelming. My mind would race. I, I just, I could not calm my mind. I would cry and I, it was just so, so hard. So what I did is I would avoid bed for as long as possible and when I finally knew that I needed to go to bed. I would hop down, grab my phone, and scroll and text with friends. Um, I would always have my computer next to me where I would be watching YouTube videos or, or Netflix. I watched all of The Office so much <laughs> and friends and all of that. I would just need to have noise around me because I could not be alone with my thoughts. That's very normal. And that's very real because sitting alone in your thoughts is incredibly vulnerable, particularly in your bed. And I just want to acknowledge that, that if you're feeling that, if you're going through that, this list is um, going to be speaking against doing those things. But there is also a time and place to get up to move forward, to take steps towards true healing in your life. And a big part of that is being comfortable and sitting alone with your feelings and going to sleep well. So I hope that these seven things, do I have seven? Yes, seven things. <laughs> I hope these seven things are really helpful for you in your healing journey, as well as just learning how to sleep really well. Number one, we're just gonna get this one out of the way because you've heard it from a million people that are way smarter than me. Um, we're just gonna get this out of the way. I'm just gonna say it because you know it's coming. <laughs> but that's, stop looking at your phone. We all know all the information about the blue light and like the blue light filter glasses and stop looking at your phone at night. I mean, all the, everybody says this, right? But it's so true. Put down your phone, put down devices at night, around nighttime, just do it. When people told me this, I was like, uh-huh, okay, not gonna follow that <laughs> because our phones are a comfort to us, right? We go to our phones when we're wanting to communicate and connect with somebody. We go to our phones when we're trying to avoid feelings. I mean, we go to our phone in, every, in everything. <laughs> I go to my phone way, way, way too much, but putting my phone on the other side of the room when I'm going to bed was a huge move and a step in the right direction. So just getting that out there, <laughs> right, out the, right out the gate, you know that I'm for not looking at your phone at night. Number two, make a peaceful space in your room. <laughs> Have your room be a peaceful and welcoming environment. And this is easier said than done. I totally understand it. If you're going through a divorce or a breakup, um, maybe you're living at your parents' house again. Um, that was the case for me. I moved back into my parents' house during my divorce and it was just crazy how different that was. It didn't feel peaceful. But creating your room as a space of refuge rather than a space that you experience anxiety. My therapist um, had this this idea for me and it actually was a game changer. When I would be experiencing anxiety or when I was just unable to sleep to actually get out of bed. It seems so counterintuitive, right? <laughs> get out of bed and read a book or pray or meditate. But to get out of bed and say, okay, well, sleep isn't happening here. That's okay. I'm, not, I'm just gonna leave that, but I'm not gonna be experiencing anxiety here in my bed because that's not where it happens go out into the living room or into the kitchen and do something that can soothe you in that time. You might have a little bit of a routine, but again, 
I want to encourage you not to look at your phone at that time. When I'm ready, when I'm calm, when I'm peaceful again, come back into bed. Number three, have a bedtime and have a wake up time. To have a bedtime that I went to bed every night at a certain time, no matter if it was the weekend, if it was the weekday, having a bedtime and having a wake up time. And this would be for me, I had, I figured out that I needed about seven hours of sleep and any more than that, any less than that, I would be thrown off for the rest of the week. <laughs> so I knew that I needed to, if I was, if I knew that my bedtime was at 11 o'clock, I would wake up at six and that is what I needed to do to be a functional human being. And that's really how I started to train my body to have a good night's sleep. It's not fun when your friends are going out and you're like, oh, I gotta get back and go to bed. You feel like an old fart. You don't want that to be the case, but it is so helpful. And I'm 30 years old now and I do this. I go to bed at a pretty early time, <laughs> but I'm so much happier and I'm so much more productive because I know I know how my body needs to function. And if I'm not getting enough sleep, um, I'm going to be thrown off in other days and other week. I'm going to be thrown off in my sleep and it's not going to be okay for me. Have a bedtime, have a wake up time and keep it consistent Monday through Sunday. Number four, this one might surprise you a little bit, but it goes along with having that sleep schedule. Stop taking naps. This seems counterintuitive. You're really tired. You're wanting to sleep better, right? So what's different with sleeping in the afternoon versus sleeping at night? Well, at least for me, I knew that if I was sleeping, if I slept poorly one night and I tried to take a nap that same day, I would sleep probably even worse or just as bad the next day because I'm trying to overcompensate. I'm trying to, my body is trying to get on a schedule and I'm messing it up. I'm messing up the schedule. So I knew that I needed about seven hours of sleep. So then when I was trying to make up for that in naps, it just wasn't working. So to really try, at least for now, there's gonna be a detox period with this. You're gonna be tired, but at least for now, try to put yourself on that schedule and as tired as you might feel, try not to take a nap. I'm sorry. I know that's not fun here. <laughs> okay, number five, cut back on the caffeine. So I was probably the biggest coffee addict that you would ever meet. I was so addicted to caffeine. I would wake up and I would go to work and I would make myself a whole French press and I would drink it within an hour. Like I'd drink the whole thing. And then around two o'clock, um, at the two o'clock lull, because we all have that, right? At work, I would drink another entire French press. You guys, that's a ton of caffeine. And it was, I was pumping my body full of caffeine thinking this is what I got to do to stay awake because I wasn't sleeping. But what that was doing to my body was throwing me off similar to naps, but even more extreme, throwing me off in my sleep pattern. It's just not healthy for you. So I'm down now to one, maybe two cups of coffee a day, and I have to have it in the morning. I used to work at a coffee shop and I would be like, oh, I can drink espresso until like 11 o'clock. Like, that's not cool <laughs> to brag about that. It was true. I could do that. Um, and sometimes I could sleep. Mostly I didn't sleep though. And now I know that if it's like noon, your girl can't have caffeine because I'm not gonna sleep. <laughs> I feel old, but that's the reality. And while I was going through my divorce, I wish I would have known that because I know I would have been a happier individual. Number six, stop eating and drinking late at night. I wanna encourage you to hang out with friends and do things that are social and all of that, but eating and drinking late at night can actually throw your body off from its natural sleep rhythm. Again, not a doctor, don't know all the things about the sleep schedules and all of that, but I know for me, when I stopped drinking alcohol and eating late at night, um, especially heavy foods or even chocolate late at night, um, I was sleeping so much better. If it was like getting to be nine o'clock and I was having another glass of wine, I won't sleep. So I know what my boundaries are and I know that I need to keep them. Otherwise, my sleep's gonna be screwed up. And 
I'm not very happy when I don't have my sleep. And number seven, have a bedtime routine that you love. You have seen all of the nighttime routines with all the beauty gurus and all that stuff. Like I don't need to tell you what to do with your nighttime routine, but have one that you enjoy. And one thing that was really helpful for me, again, putting my phone away <laughs> was part of the routine, but getting a journal out and journaling my anxieties journaling all of those things that are in my head, floating there, just running rampant, get it out of your head onto paper can be a great part of your routine so that you can hit the pillow and you can think, okay, I don't have to think about all this anxiety. I, I've already written it down. I can worry about it tomorrow, but I'm not going to let that um, affect my sleep. That was a really important thing for me as part of my routine. Maybe you love to do skincare. Maybe you want to take a bath. Maybe you want to read a great book. Maybe you want to call a friend. That is great. Do whatever you need to do that helps you soothe down at night, but have a routine and stick to it. So guys, that is my seven tips for training yourself to be a better sleeper while you're healing from heartbreak. And again, I want to acknowledge that you're going through something hard. You are going through something hard and sleep could be a huge issue for you like it was for me. But give yourself lots of grace and a great way to do that is to treat yourself to a great night sleep. Grieving takes so much work. It is so, so hard. So treating yourself, training yourself to sleep well can be a great way of self-care, of caring for yourself in this really, really difficult time. And I wish that I would have taken this time to implement these steps in my life while I was going through my divorce. I know that I, it would have been better for me that I would have been a happier individual, that I would have gotten a lot more done, but that I it would have just been better for my overall well-being. So I hope that you can learn from my mistakes and that you can take these and you can actually begin to take active and practical steps towards healing because healing and restoration is possible for your life. It does not matter what you've gone through. Be encouraged and live reclaimed. Mm -hmm.